Let's start off by reviewing how to find the domain. Our domain tells us all of our possible x values that we can use for a function. If we graph it, it tells us where our graph is going to start and essentially stop. And based on the type of equation you have, you can find your domain. If your equation is a polynomial, and polynomials are our most basic equations under polynomials. We have linear equations where our graph is going to be a line. Also constant functions where you have horizontal lines. We have quadratic equations where our graph is a parabola. We have cubic equations where our graph is an S shape. We have quartic equations where our graph is a W shape, and it goes on after that. We just call it degree of whatever the highest exponent is. What we notice about all these graphs is that they're continuous. You can draw them without lifting your pencil off the paper. There are no gaps in the graphs, no holes. There's no X values missing. So with any of these, we would have no problem plugging in any X that we want. In addition to that, absolute value functions and their graph is a V, has the same characteristics. We can draw it without lifting our pencil off the paper. There are no gaps in the graph. There's no points missing. There's no space in between anywhere. You can plug any X value into these types of equations and you have no problem. Same thing if you have an odd root of a radical. So if you have Q root, fifth root, ninth root, any of these, when you draw the graph, there are no gaps, there are no holes, there's no points missing. So for all of these types of equations, our domain is always negative infinity to positive infinity. You can use any x value you want and you don't have a problem. If your equation is rational, and rational equations, you have variables in your denominator. Here, we always have to prevent having zero in the denominator. So we don't care what is in the numerator. All we care about is that our denominator is never zero. The reason we never want our denominator to be zero is that this is undefined. It doesn't exist. So we have to always prevent that situation. So to do so, we have to find what is our excluded value. What is the value that we cannot use? What is the value that we cannot have? So we take our denominator. We set that equal to 0, not equal to 0, doesn't matter. All we're saying is what we know is that x cannot be 5. That is our excluded value. We can have any other x value than that, but we cannot use 5. So our domain is negative infinity to 5 union 5 positive infinity. We don't use brackets here because brackets mean we can be equal to that value. Here we cannot be equal to 5. If our equation is a radical equation, radical and we have an even root, square root, fourth root, we have to always make sure that we never have negative numbers under the radical sign. So whenever we have a negative under the radical sign, this is when we end up with imaginary solutions. So square root of negative 1 by definition is i. So simplifying that we get 2i. We want to make sure that this never happens. So to find our domain of even roots, we take whatever is under our radical sign, we call that the radicand, we set that greater than or equal to 0, and then we solve. So x has to be greater than or equal to 5. So here our domain is 5 positive infinity. We use a bracket because we can actually be equal to 5. You can have 0 under the radical, but you cannot have a negative number under the radical.